Hello and welcome to part two of my summer illustration collection. I'm Julia and I'm a teacher and self-taught illustrator from Oldenburg, Northern Germany. So this is, like I just said, part two um, of a series where I create some summer illustrations which you might use as stickers or as kind of a poster, a summary poster. And in part one I shared my process from doing um, the sketches and finding inspiration, creating a mood board, creating a color palette and so on. And now in part two I want to share my painting process. And as you can see I'm starting out with the sun here and I probably did that because it's the easiest element of all of them. It's basically just a circle so I can warm up. I lowered the opacity of my sketch and then I even I think I turned off the sketch layer and I just started by painting a yellow circle and I think I used some kind of painting brush there. A brush I used a lot for these illustrations is the turpentine brush. It's a Procreate Native brush from the painting section. Yes, and then I put a clipping mask over the circle and set that one to multiply and I'm using my alcohol ink stamps here, which I absolutely love. I just love that kind of... how can I describe it? It's, it's a bit like watercolor, but I think it goes even further than watercolor. And I've created a stamp set um, of, I think it's 15 stamps, which you can get in my coffee shop. I will link that down below. So I will be using these a lot and um, what I'm doing is I'm always using them with clipping masks. So I will be drawing some kind of solid color and then I will put a layer on top of that color and tap that layer and go to clipping mask and then that makes sure that like for instance the alcohol ink stamp in this case just applies to that layer underneath um, and doesn't go beyond that is beyond the right word I don't know so here you can see me trying to get some color variation into the Sun so I have some darker parts in there and some lighter parts and also this kind of dotty pattern. Um, this is something I really like to have some kind of patterns in my illustrations. Yes and then I'm making a group and naming that Sun so I try to keep my layers as organized as possible. Moving on to the glass I'm using some kind of opaque, no that's the wrong word, transparent brush and I think it might be the paper rough which is from a watercolor set I got on design cuts as part of a deal so I think I got I don't know it was quite a lot maybe 10 12 15 uh, paper procreate brush sets from different creators for how much was it 15 dollars 20 25 I don't know design cuts is really great they do these bundles and then you can get quite a lot for you know really not a lot of money and I absolutely love this paper rough brush. Um, yes and again I'm trying to get some variation in here. Here you can see me painting the red of the... it's supposed to be an Aperol spritz, <laughs> something I really love. And I paint that on a layer beneath the glass so it looks like the Aperol is in the glass but I think what I will be doing is cutting out some parts of let me see what am I got oh, here I'm trying to work with the layer mask and will that work I'm using a gray so I will try to make that part where you can also see the Aperol make less visible so the part of the glass I want to be less visible and by using a layer mask I can reduce the opacity here. Will I leave it at that? Seems so. So erasing some 
parts of the red. And if you want me to, I could um, explain how I use layer masks. I use them quite a lot. They are a non-destructive way of working, so you don't erase, you just mask part of the parts of the image you don't want to uh, be visible anymore. Getting back to the sun and working on that a bit more. This is something I do. Um, I, I was probably not that satisfied with the sun yet, and then I feel like I can't get on, and then I just move on to another object and then get back to it later. Um, yes, and I've used another clipping mask here with the wine. Uh, the wine, it's not wine, it's an Aperol. Um, I think I'm doing the same. Getting back to it later on. Because I'm, I, I struggle with this orange, I remember that, and I think I will kind of remove it to another place. And then I will get back to the Aperol later. So, um, I didn't tell you this but when I uh, worked on the Sun I also set many of the layers that I made clipping mask with these alcohol ink stems I set them to different blending modes like color dodge or multiply and when I started out using procreate I really didn't use a lot of blending modes um, but the more I worked with it the more I used them and I really encourage you to try out using blending modes and just see what they do because they can get especially with you know if you want to um, portray some lighting like maybe a forest where the light comes through the leaves you can get really really nice um, results with using um, I think it's the add mode I use a lot with the yellow so yes definitely check that out here I'm duplicating the stamp, the alcohol ink stamp I created. And you can also move these stamps around by using the arrow and then you can, you know, turn them around, drag them around. Yeah, putting part of the orange beneath the glass so it looks like it is in the glass. working on the glass a bit more. I just realized I have never really painted glass before and I remember it took me quite a while. And if I look at it now, it seems kind of too brownish. It should be more of a bluish kind of look. Anyways, here I put a very very transparent layer of watercolor above the Aperol to make it look more like it is in the glass and the brush I use was oh, I forgot the name right now but it's from Lucy Fleming um, I will link down the brush set I will link the brush set down below I took one of her classes on Domestica and you got the brush set there for free and I can't recommend this class enough it's about children's illustrations I will link it down below as well and um, yes so I got a lot of great tips for creating a lovely scene and I also got this brush set and um, I've been using this brush ever since I took the class Ah, here I put a soft light layer above the glass and by using soft light blending mode with a oh <laughs> here I reached my maximum layers and what I'm doing now is I'm resampling my canvas and make it a bit smaller to get more layers 8 by 8 would that be enough maybe uh, what was I just saying before ah soft soft light um, if you put a soft light layer on top of another layer and use a black with it you can kind of create shadows and make the color underneath darker 
but also often more vibrant at the same time so I sometimes use that for creating shadows and I did that did that with the Aperol spritz. Yes, with the shell I did the same. I just created a base color with is some kind of beige and then I used some of my alcohol ink stamps and sometimes I used them with multiply and create darker parts with it and sometimes I also use them with white or with blending modes like um, add or screen to create highlights. Yes, and I'm playing around with the blending mode of the white alcohol ink stamp there. Ah, and here I'm creating a darker stamp with multiply. The reason you can see this kind of um, these words appear on the screen as someone put it who was asking him about it um, is that I use the quick menu and I've got all of my favorite brushes in my quick menu and I've got a video up explaining how you can set up your quick menu it really speeds up your workflow so check that video video out if I can figure out how I will link it somewhere um, but I will definitely link it down this in the description or maybe you just check out all my other videos and find it there. Yes, another trick you can do if you feel that an effect of a clipping mask or a stamp or something, some texture you created is too, too intense, you can just lower the opacity of that um, layer and make or check out if you like it. better if the opacity is lower. Sorry, I was just looking at what I was doing here. Yes, using more and more alcohol ink stamps and then going onto the base layer and painting a bit on it. Oh no, I did that on a clipping mask. Deleting some layers. So I realized I really like a kind of watercolory look, but I also love texture. And um, so I've got a lot of watercolor brushes and like these alcohol ink stamps in my repertoire, but I also have a lot of texture brushes and stamps and I use them both. So with this um, umbrella, I'm creating a new layer for every color I'm using. So I've already got four layers, one for the orange, one for the yellow, blue and one for the brown. And then I'm setting them to alpha lock. And now if I paint on, for instance, this orange layer, I can't paint over the orange I've already created. So it just locks this layer and make sure that I stay within the boundaries that I want to keep. And I think the brush I'm using here might be either the turpentine from the painting section or the paper rough, but I think it's the turpentine probably. I really enjoy that brush because it smudges and paints at the same time. So, and then I'm using all different kinds of hues of that color I have and draw over it, over it again and again but what I don't like about that brush that much is that it kind of mutes the colors I feel and makes them look a bit muddy so I don't use it that much anymore um, I tend to use the paper rough now um, which is from this watercolor set from design cuts which I mentioned before Here I'm painting a bit on the, what's the word for that? I don't even know in German. What would you say? It's the st 
thick? No. Ah, you know what I mean. The long brown thing beneath the umbrella. So now I'm starting to work with clipping masks. And again, using my stamps. Just again realize how, how long I tend to work on an object. Oh, it seems I'm done now. Sonnenschirm. Umbrella. Sun umbrella? Is it a sun umbrella? I don't know. Yes, I think part of um, because I'm part of why I'm working so long on these um, objects is because I still try to figure out how to do it in a way that makes me like the result. Uh, moving on to the watermelon here and yes that might be interesting what I'm doing here is I use a textured brush as an eraser so you can see the eraser is blue so I'm um, erasing parts of the red and the green here and if I use an eraser that is text textured um, that makes also that makes the edges more textured and the brush I'm using might be the oh, I can't remember now how it's called I would have to look that up um, but I know that there is one brush that's similar in Procreate and I think that's the Copperhead brush I will try to remember to look that up and put it in this in the description Yes, and again, I'm trying to make sure that there are variations of lighter and darker parts using my alcohol stamps again. <laughs> feel like I'm repeating myself, which of course I am. Someone, I think I learned it in the class that you should check um, if, if you have an illustration you should make it black and white and then check if there are a lot of white and dark parts and check if it looks interesting in black and white as well as in color because sometimes you can't or you can see better if your illustration has enough contrast if you see it in black and white because you get a bit distracted by the different colors and if it's just black and white you can clearly see, okay, there is enough contrast or there isn't. Did I already say that it's um, the brush I'm using here to erase is the dried up brush? I looked it up. I'm not quite sure whether I said that or not. Um, the dried up brush and appropriate alternative would be, um, I will link the dried up brush, but the appropriate alternative would be the copperhead. Creating a group, again, always helpful to be organized with your layers. Oh yeah, here I'm doing something which I actually don't do anymore, or not very often. Um, I'm painting in the dress with a brush and I've just realized over the last couple of weeks that I use so much texture on top of the solid color I've got underneath that I can just really do a color drop for the very first base layer of color and then um, I will work on it so much that you know even if I create a texture in the beginning it will get lost in the end so I um, 
nowadays <laughs> it's really not that long ago that I painted these illustrations but um, what I do now more is just to um, make a base layer by using a color drop here I'm using the turpentine again I set that layer to alpha lock to make sure I don't paint over the boundaries of the dress and I'm using this turpentine brush which like I just said smudges and paints at the same time and I already make sure to have a nice color variation in there here I'm using a procreate native brush um, it's the fresco I think it's called and it has some kind of watercolory effect as well playing with the blending modes and landing on normal okay <laughs> landing on normal um, this pattern is something that I really like and use quite a lot in my illustration it's from the instant artist collection brush set by Lisa Glantz which I will link down as well and it's just a very simple leaf pattern which just all in, in all its simplicity looks so nice so I use it quite a lot um, for dresses or wallpapers or I just very re recently made a uh, what's the word for that not a chair a more comfy thing you can sit in and read your book can't remember it right now Again, I'm erasing parts that I don't want with a textured brush to make the egg edge look more textured. I think I said that before in one of my videos, but when I started out with Procreate, so I have been painting digitally or drawing digitally, uh, no, not digitally, but um, I have been drawing with watercolors painting with watercolors and drawing with pencils for many years and when I started out using Procreate I didn't like um, what I was painting at all so it was definitely lo not love at first sight um, because I felt everything looked so digital and uh, when did I start maybe two years ago I forgot right now but um, it was a gradual approach to Procreate to using it more and more nowadays I'm using it every day and I can't imagine living without it but um, yes it, I took really quite a while to learn how to make my digital drawings look more analog and um, the huge part of that was using a lot of Lisa Glantz's brush sets and also overlays she has digital overlays which give that element of um, of charms is it charts so if you paint digitally you could control everything and make everything look really perfect and what I like about analog painting analog in an analog way is that you have always these lucky or not so lucky accidents and um, yes I try to replicate replicate that a bit with using procreate and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but I can safely say nowadays that I absolutely love working with it and um, using these uh, the benefit of painting digitally is that you can undo everything and resize things and you know lower the opacity or duplicate layers to make something more intense I mean it's it's really something that you can't do if you paint traditionally Oh, here you can see me oh no you can't <laughs> maybe a little bit like if, I, if it's not a clipping mask it goes over the edge and I will in a minute make that no I won't I <laughs> will just erase it okay so uh, I thought I could teach you a lesson but I couldn't
Yes, so here I'm trying, or I try to get a bit more texture onto the sunscreen. Sunscreen? Is it the right word? Um, and then I move on to the glasses. They were my least favorite part, and that's probably because they are so dark. So, try it one more time, seems. Um, yes, I don't know why I made them brown. I think I will also try to make them blue, but don't like it. I'm not quite sure. But they were just dark and plain, and I it was just no fun to, to paint them. But I thought you can't have a good summer illustration collection without some sunglasses, so I had to push through. Again, I'm erasing the edge with a textured brush, probably the dried up brush I mentioned before. setting that brown to alpha lock and painting on it and trying to get in some color variation. Doing the same with the glasses. Yes, and it seems I moved on very quickly then to the shoes, which I absolutely adore. Um, more precisely, they are sandals, and um, yes, I try to paint the sunglasses as quickly as possible to paint something that I actually enjoy painting. Now, with the shoes, I think here it made sense to paint the base color with a gouache brush because I think they will, or I'm quite sure of the, some of the texture that I used there is also still showing in the finished illustration. So, um, yes, here it was quite wise to not work with a color block. trying if I want to have the soles of the shoes, sandals, blue. And I think I will work on the sandals later on. I'm quite sure I will. Um, but maybe I felt that I wanted to make them right so desperately that I didn't know how to move on. And then I thought to move on to something more easy like the ice cream here. Again, I'm like with the, the, the umbrella, I'm using a separate layer for every color here. That makes it much easier to apply clipping masks to that certain part with a certain kind of color. And that is one of the reasons I'm using so many layers and I have to keep my canvases quite small or at least I can't really work on very large canvases because I'm using so many layers. Yes, here I'm doing some mark making or creating little patterns. Which I always feel gives it a more kind of hand painted look. Getting back to the sandals and working on the soles. I think 
I'm working with the turpentine here. Putting on some stamps. <laughs> Trying to get more kind of a 3D look by making the edges a bit darker and creating a highlight on top. making the edges of the sandals a bit more defined by darkening them with a very textured, textured brush. Adding some more highlights and creating a group for the ice cream. Again, trying to make it look a bit more 3D. So, and I'm just seeing that not much of the texture um, of the base color is shining through, so it didn't make sense after all to use a gouache brush there. Oh, here I'm, or I just could just see me um, making them a bit a bit lighter by using U saturation brightness and bumping up the brightness a bit. So I actually never wear shorts, um, but I think they are such a cute summer outfit element that I absolutely needed them in my collection. way by just doing a selecting that part and copying and pasting it <clears throat> also something that you can't do with traditional mediums and sometimes it saves a bit of time yeah I'm using the turpentine brush here again to make it look more painterly using my stems. Sometimes I zoom out to um, because you can really tell from afar if your illustration looks interesting or not. Um, and again with interesting I mainly mean having a good um, <clears throat> good contrast in there. a break you could just see me putting my pencil aside taking a break I don't know the actual time it took me I will maybe check that out later um, but for now it's most of the time if I do an illustration it takes me about let's say 12 to 14 hours um, with the iPad you can track your time and see how much you actually paint might have changed my brush nib there I don't know um, yes and I most of the time I really take quite a while to build up all these textures um, but I am getting a bit faster so I did a draw this in your style um, a couple of days ago where I was quite 
surprised to see that it just took me, I think, four or five hours. And um, yes, part of that is that I do the base colors with just a color block. And like the more I paint, the more certain I get with my with my process. So I just know which steps uh, are following. Uh, I just flatten some of the elements that I like because again I ran out of layers. So I flattened the watermelon and something else. And um, I try, of course I try to keep everything in layers, but if I run out of layers and I don't want to make my canvas any smaller then I try to flatten some of the images where I'm quite sure that I like the look of it, of them. I like the strawberry, so maybe I will flatten that later on as well. Here I'm looking for a nice pattern to put on the strawberry, but then decide against it. Ah, so there it is. Yes, the bikini, I think it ends up with a more kind of a yellowish color. And I'm not quite sure why that was. Maybe I, if I didn't like the orange or if I felt there was too much orange in my illustrations don't quite remember that right now but I know that I played around with the colors quite a bit again for the base color I used one of the gouache brushes here and then using the turpentine on the base color while having on the alpha lock mode. So alpha lock means that you can't paint over the edges of the color you already put down. Sometimes you can dab with these um, brushes, like for instance, if you dab on your canvas with the uh, turpentine brush, it's kind of like a stamp and it also gives a very nice tex texture. This is quite a difficult word for me to pronounce, it's texture. Defining the edges a bit. putting one of Lisa Glantz's pattern onto the bikini. But I remember I really wasn't satisfied with the result. And if I look at it now, I don't like the color of it. I'm checking the, uh, what is it called? The color thumbnail in between um, to look, because like in my first video, you can see me trying to figure out which color has to go where to have a good balance of all of the colors I want to use. And I put down orange for the bikini, but yeah, I really don't like how it looks. Now, this is already my last element, the seagull. Um, I, I wanted to make it look very nice, but I'm quite of semi-satisfied with it. I think it looks, looks a bit plain in the end. But for me, summer is very, very highly connected with the seagulls and the sound of them. And um, I think that goes back to my childhood. I was born in Hamburg. Ah, here you can see me trying to find a better color for the bikini. And I e either made it brighter or I put down the saturation. I don't know. But I think I might keep it at that. I'm not quite sure yet. I know that I like it better at that point. 
Um, I'm choosing a different background here to, because I'm painting the seagull with white and uh, I needed a darker background to uh, go with the white or to make make the white stand out so I can see what I'm doing. Using the turpentine brush here. And... Ah, huh, forgot about that. I'm inserting a texture and setting it to linear burn to make my illustration look more, even more hand drawn, hand painted. Um, you can get these textures on my Kofi as well, they are free. I will link them down below. Oh, and I forgot about that little flower there. But I think I will keep that one very easy, uh, very simple. Ah, here you can see I, I changed the color of the bikini again. I changed it to yellow. There might have been some part where I didn't film. Don't really remember. Probably forgot to put on the camera. If I look at it now, I think I like the orange version much better. But anyways, I think I settled on the yellow one. It lacks a bit of contrast, especially the top. But it is as it is. It is as it is. Oh, it is as it. I can't say that. It is as it is now. That's what I wanted to say. Again, putting a little kind of pattern onto that flower to make it look a bit more interesting and and paint it. Ah, and finally I'm getting back to my Aperol Spritz and work on that orange a bit more. I might also add in some leaves or I did I just leave them out because I was too lazy? I wanted... Oh no, there I paint them. I remember that I wanted to have some. Flattening some more layers. And I think I will get back to the seagull again. I'm still not very happy with it. Oh, he's painting a little pit pattern on the neck. That is something I really like. Working on the legs there. Make them look a bit more interesting. Creating some shadows. Yes, and that was it. Thanks for watching and make sure to maybe check some out some of my other videos. Bye!